What's up, everybody? My name is Chris, hanging here in the Seacrest Studios with you on this wonderful Friday. I think it's a Friday. Is it a Friday? Hey, Maya, are you there? Is it a Friday? Yes. Hi. Yes. Oh, oh, hi. Yes, Maya. Um, well, Maya, we don't normally get to talk to you on a Friday, but I'm super glad we get to talk to you on a Friday. Why is today such a special Friday to be able to talk to you? Because John Rednitsky is calling in. We got John Rednitsky on the line with Maya. What a treat. John, thanks for joining us. Maya, my friend, take it away, girl. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for calling in. I've been so excited to talk to you all week. So. Oh my gosh, well, I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, so my first question for you yeah. is who or what sparked your interest in acting? Um, well, I would say that um, my family were, was my first audience, you know, so like entertaining my my uh, brothers and my my parents in the living room was like a big start for me. You know, that was that was my first stage and uh, kind of caught the bug then. Yeah. Oh, cool. And then I would grow up obviously watching like SNL and, uh, you know, uh, early you know adam sandler and chris farley and those guys were a big inspiration on me and also steve martin and robin williams oh cool yeah um so when did you first know that you wanted to be a comedian i think it was when i was a kid you know i was never really good at sports or anything like that and during recess there was this lunch lady, Mrs. Ryan, and I would just try to make her laugh during lunch while, you know, while my buddies were playing sports. Sometimes while they were playing uh, like football or something, I would be a commentator on the side and like come in and ask them questions about how they think the play went. And, you know, I was just uh, a theatrical person and just I like, always loved being a ham and entertaining uh people and i just I, my even in high school my mom would drive me into new york city to do open mics at the uh, uh comic strip so even at 16 i was doing stand up and just always wanted to perform oh cool yeah um so is there a comedian that's had the biggest impact on your comedy style um the comedian that's had the biggest impact. I mean, I think the the group I mentioned earlier, you know, like Adam Sandler and, and Farley and those guys, Chris Rock, somebody I always grew up loving. Um, Rob Williams was, was huge for me. You know, Jim Carrey. Um, it was, you know, physical, very physical um, comedian, you know, actor, and that had a big profound effect on me uh yeah. will smith when i was growing up i was obsessed with will smith and i watched every episode of the fresh prince of bel-air and i would uh i would dance to a different will smith song every year for the talent show in middle school so i did men in black in second grade and um like wild wild west one year i had a big will smith obsession so yeah it was just like the way he moved the way he danced on on the fresh prince I would do all those moves and imitate that. Um, that I would say that was like one of my first uh, influences. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so what has been your favorite comedy sketch that you've either written or been in? Um, well, I would say that the Dirty Dancing bit that I did on Weekend Update on SNL was probably one of my favorite things I ever did. And I, you know, I, that to me was the first bit that made me realize that the little kid that was dancing to the Will Smith song in middle school and the guy that was working on his stand up jokes could be one thing, you know, and it was, it was a moment that clicked for me where I realized I could incorporate this physical dancing comedy thing into you know, and make it a, a stylistic choice. So Dirty Dancing was definitely that for me. And it it was a part of my audition piece for SNL. So it did change my life in the sense that that led to me getting the show and then doing it on the show. And obviously being on SNL was, was a dream of mine. So, 
you know, that, that bit, uh, that, that sketch kind of helped launch my career in a lot of ways. Oh, cool. Um, so, um, you played George in one of my all time favorite movies, Home Again. Yeah. Um, and, I'm so happy you love that movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, I watch it all the time. Like I watched yeah. it this morning and you watched so, it this morning? Yeah. Oh my god, I love that. I actually there was a couple of years ago I um had to have surgery and I was really anxious. And so I remember I watched home again before um surgery wow. and i just felt like so much better just watching that and, oh wow that's amazing yeah. to hear and i'm glad you're doing all right oh now. thank you thank yeah. you and i think it's amazing that you do this show also i think it's what what inspired you to do this show um i've just i've always loved pop culture yeah. and so and i never really knew what to do with that because a lot of like people I talked to, like ha would have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> so, um, and so I'm just like, oh, you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I, when the studio opened, and I found out like um, kids could do their own show, then I was like, okay, I'm like putting my love of pop culture into this so great and you've had some incredible guests on it's going well for you yeah <laughs> so thank cool you. thank you um yeah, so um my question about the home again is just yeah. also i watched that so the movie is like my go-to movie whenever i'm having a bad day um and um, so I was wondering what was the best part of working on that movie? The best part of working on that movie, I mean, working with Reese, you know, working with Reese Witherspoon was pretty incredible getting to watch this legend work and the way she, you know, set the tone on set. Yeah, she's a... She's obviously a massive movie star, but she's an incredibly down to earth and kind human being. And I had such a great time working on that. Um, and I just loved the, the other boys in it, Pico and Ned and Hallie, the director is amazing. And Nancy, her mom, Nancy Myers, who has done, you know, a million incredible movies. And um, so there was so much to love about that. And it was, a you know, my first big role in a movie. So for me, that was, you know, kind of surreal to be driving to a set and, and acting across from Reese Witherspoon. And, you know, it was a very exciting time in my life. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I loved every minute of it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so could you relate to George in any way? Definitely. I mean, I think uh, that uh, those guys were all coming out to L.A. and trying to, you know, make a name for themselves in the, you know, in entertainment. And I feel like that's what I did. You know, I didn't get to live in uh, Reese Witherspoon's house or anything when I first came out there. Um, but uh, definitely relate to just kind of um, that hopeful ignorance that it takes to make it you know yeah yeah um so what movie or show do you watch when you're having a bad day that's a good question i don't know if there's a, a go-to but you know this week i watched i rewatched harold and maude which is one of my favorite movies. I showed that to my friends. And this movie, Being There, with Peter Sellers, and they're two Hal Ashby movies, and they're both incredible. Not sure if you've ever seen them, no. but they're uh, they're classics. And uh, I watched both of them this week. Uh, for I've seen them both a number of times, and you know, 
definitely incredible, inspiring movies. Um, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely, those are up there for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was it like to, um, work with George Clooney and then Pico Alexander again in Catch-22? Yeah, Pico and I actually worked on three things together. We did uh, Home Again, we did Catch-22, and we did this movie Summertime. That's actually going to, even though we shot it four years ago, Anthony Ramos is in it, who I know you interviewed. Yeah. Um, and uh, that that's going to come out this summer. But uh, we've done three things together, which is pretty wild. But that was an unbelievable experience because we shot Catch-22 in Sardinia, um, you know, off the coast of Italy. So it was like, you know, in the summertime, it was this magical experience. We were there for three and a half months. And then we were in Rome, too, shooting. And Pico and I were already close, but we got much closer there because we were just, you know, when we weren't shooting, we were in this kind of paradise. We were on the beach and... Um, yeah, getting to work with Clooney and Kyle Chandler and all the and Hugh Laurie, all these legendary actors, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a dream. It was a dream. It was the greatest summer of my whole life. And Pico is is one of my dearest friends, and I'm very lucky that I've gotten to work with him so much. Um, and then and then George Clooney, obviously, it was like you know I was very intimidated by George Clooney. I I was very nervous. And I still don't think I ever had a, a conversation with him that I felt great about. I think I was always in my head and always worried about what I was saying to him because I was just so in awe, like it's George Clooney. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, <laughs> um, even though he's very nice and all that, I just wanted to be cool in front of him. And I feel like when you want to be cool is always when you're not, you know, when you're yeah. thinking about how to be cool. You're never yeah. yourself. So it was hard for me to get out of my head, even though I had three and a half months to get it right. I don't know that I ever did. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, one of the greatest uh, experiences of my whole life. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have any upcoming projects? Well, I'm actually in Chicago right now shooting um, a TV show for Fox called The Big Leap, and it's going to come out in September, in the fall, and it's um, an hour-long dramedy that's um, about uh, a reality dance show. So it's like behind the scenes of a reality dance show, so I'll be dancing a lot on it, and uh, Scott Foley's on it, it's got a great big cast, and it's a lot of fun. And so I'm here rehearsing for that now and I'll be here till November working on it. And then I'm also in the next season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, um, which is one of my all time favorite shows. So that, that's, that was also a bucket list moment for me. So yeah, I got a couple of things I'm, I'm working on at the moment. And then I'm always doing stand up comedy, always trying to perform on stage. That's a constant in my life. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so what is your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve. I don't that's 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 a that's a hard one to think about. I guess uh people who are uh, mean in general. Yeah. Just people who yeah, who are mean would be the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. And wasting yeah. food. I don't like seeing food wasted. You go to a restaurant, you see the people like order all this food and they're just gonna throw it away. You know? <laughs> I would eat that. Don't throw that away. I would eat that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um yeah. so um are you is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Um I'm watching The Sopranos. I'm watching this Tim Robinson show on Netflix called I Think You Should Leave, which is a sketch show that a uh, former SNL writer and cast member 
uh, that's hysterical. I'm watching Dave on FX. Um, yeah, those are those are a few. I'm trying to think of what else. And I'm just like catching up on a lot of movies. Um, I'm staying with one of my buddies on this show that we're doing. We're, we're, we're rooming together for the first two weeks and we're showing each other our favorite movies. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I watched After Hours uh, two nights ago, which is an old Martin Scorsese movie that's very kooky and out there. And I had never seen it. It was amazing. Um, and unlike anything he, I'd ever seen him do. So that was really, yeah. It's fun to watch. Uh, it's fun, you know, to watch movies you've never seen classics. So I'm always trying to do that too. That's never ending. I feel like I could be in my apartment and, you know, for weeks yeah. at a time just watching things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, what song do you have on repeat on your playlist? What song do I have on repeat? Um, I listened to, uh, this, uh, Van Morrison album called Hard Knows the Highway that I listen to a lot, uh, on repeat. That's always like relaxing and nice. Um, that's one. Yeah. Nico. I've been listening to a lot of Nico. You know, that is, um, basically anything that would be in like a Wes Anderson movie. I listen to that, that, that kind of feel good music, you know? acoustic guitar yeah yeah cool. yeah um so is there a line from a movie song or book that's always stuck with you it's from a movie song or book that's always stuck with me not really off the top of my head although i do feel like i'm quoting movies all the time, speeches from movies. I feel like I'm usually quoting something from like Goodwill Hunting or, or or something, but I you know not off the top of my head right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm like constantly just quoting like either speaking in song lyrics or like movie or shows. yeah what's your go to? Um I don't know. I um, along with Home Again, I'm also obsessed with Shazam. So there's a lot of quotes from that. Yeah, that, you interviewed Zachary Levi, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is and, that cool? Um, Jack Dylan Grazer. Yeah, it was so cool. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's wild. That's really, really wild. Was there a movie that kind of made you fall in love with movies? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. I think I have like, I don't know if there was really one, but I have like a couple go-to movies that yeah. I like Home Again and Shazam. And so. yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that Home Again is, is top of the list there. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I think um, like over the past, month i think i've probably watched it like 10 times so oh my god well you know pico would definitely do this show oh that yeah that that would be so cool yeah, i think you could definitely get uh, i could i could talk to pico about doing this for sure oh thank you of course <laughs> I'm just like, I feel like I'm not really speaking in full sentences. Like, I'm just, I can't believe I'm talking to you. So, I, sorry if I come across like, just. You're great. You're great. I'm, uh, I'm nervous about what I'm saying too all the time. You know, I get a, you know, I get the same way. It's totally fine. And uh, I'm so happy to be talking to you, you know. I want to say smart things too. You know, so when you ask me something, I'm like, oh, I want to have a really good answer for Maya. And then I'm like, oh, that was a dumb answer. So, you know, I do, I'm doing the same thing you are. Um, so uh, my last question for you is yeah. who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? A real life superhero. My mom is a real life superhero. 
She's a social worker at um, Valley Hospital in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, she's a geriatric social worker. So she deals with, you know, putting people in hospice and nursing homes and assisted livings. And she helps families, you know, with the heaviest of things. And I know you're familiar with with heavy things yourself. And so I, I consider my mom a, a real life hero. Yeah, she's an amazing person. And, you know, she deals with, 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 with these things on a daily basis, but she's the lightest and happiest person I know at the same time. And she had space for everybody in her life, you know, despite how chaotic her, her, her day to day can be. She works hard, you know, harder than anyone I know. She doesn't make a lot of money doing it. Um, but yeah, she's, she's really amazing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, yeah, I think most moms are superheroes. Like <laughs> yeah. my, my mom is my superhero and also my yeah. sister. So. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. That's so cool. Are you, uh, you're, you're at home now? Yes, I am. Yeah. With, with your mom and all that. Yes, my mom, my sister, and our dog, so. <laughs> they probably think it's pretty cool that you're doing this, right? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, my mom, yeah, tells me, like, when we're watching, uh, like, Home Again now, and my mom is always like, wait a minute, you talk to him, and so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. It's pretty yeah. cool. That you get to say, I like this movie. I want to talk to that person. And then you talk to that person. But, you know, most people don't think that that's a possibility. So they don't even go for it. You know, it's the same thing I felt when I was like, I want to be on in movies. And people will say, well, that's impossible. You know, that's winning the lottery. You can't do that. And you say, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> of course it's possible. That's how those other people got it, you know. On yeah. there. So you can yeah. do it and you're doing it. So I, I, I admire that. And uh, I think you're thank probably you. very inspiring to a lot of people. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I thank you so much for calling in. I still uh, haven't processed that and talking <laughs> to you. So, <laughs> Of course. Yes. No, I'm happy to do it. I'll, I'll come back. We'll do it again. And I'll tell Pico. <laughs> and uh, have him on the show and then this way you can have a home again uh, you know you get the whole home again thing going here we could do a reunion yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome hey john thank thanks you. yeah thank you so much thanks for your time today. thank you so much i so appreciate this if you're ever in denver uh you have an open invitation to the seacrest studios here at children's hospital colorado I'm sure I will be there at some point, and I will take you up on that. I would love to come through. That sounds good, John. Hope to see you again. All right. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Bye, Maya. Bye. What a cool talk with John <laughs> Rudnitsky from yeah. uh, Home Again, from Catch-22, so yeah. many other things. That's awesome. And, uh, hey, sounds like you might have struck up a deal to maybe get uh, Pico on your show, too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, Maya. Awesome show. Hey, what a way to end a week, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than that. But we get to start our week, I think, with you next week on your show as well on Monday. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Maya. Well, we'll see you on Monday. You have an awesome weekend, okay? Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.